All right, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the uh, virtual forum on the project and portfolio management in Australian federal government. Uh, my name is Leith Adel. I'm the general manager at EPM Partners. Uh, with me uh, today, two uh, speakers from the federal government, both very experienced in the um, uh, project portfolio management, uh, I guess, uh, competencies in their own agencies and departments. Uh, we have Daniel Bruns, uh, who currently work at Comcare, and we have uh, Gordon Thomas, who works at NDIA. We'll hear from both our speakers uh, shortly. Um, the agenda for today is really to start with uh, what we see as, uh, I guess, challenges and different aspects of the project portfolio management disciplines within the Australian federal government. Uh, we're also going to present what we think a uh, solution that will address those challenges. And then obviously the speakers will talk about uh, th their own experience on how those solutions were implemented and how effective they were and so on. Uh, obviously coming from EPM Partners, we are going to talk about when it comes to the technology, we're going to talk about the Microsoft stack of technology. But when we are going to talk about the landscape of the project and portfolio management challenges in the uh, federal government, we're not going to restrict it to this technology, but when I demo and when I talk about technological kind of um, solutions to the challenges, I'm going to use Microsoft. But we think, we believe that if it's a, a, an, a, a vendors other than Microsoft, you'll have similar uh, approaches, similar solutions, um, and therefore similar results. Um, so I'm going to start with um, what, we, what we all, I think, know. Uh, by the way, I hope that you can see, share my screen. Uh, we have uh, our marketing uh, uh, assistant, Lisa, on the call as well. So uh, if we have any problems, you probably prompt me to uh, do something else or the quality of what you see is not good. So I'm hoping that it's all going well now. Um, so the, 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 the prediction, I guess, that coming from different institutes, different consultancy firms, different, uh, I guess, uh, bodies of knowledge, uh, is that the project portfolio management discipline will it, it will change, has changed, will continue uh, to change in the future. Um, because of this digital transformation and artificial intelligence that we're seeing all around the globe, um, even prior to COVID-19, I, I know that the kind of the digital transformation has been accelerated with working from home uh, kind of environment that COVID-19 has uh, increased in many organizations, you know, federal government being one of them. Um, but uh, even prior to that, you know, digital transformation is at the heart of probably uh, every strategy. And we know for a fact, for example, DTA is one of the example, uh, is, is an agency that is created for the digital transformation strategy for the Australian federal government. Um, so through this digita digitization, uh, we know that uh, the only way to A, achieve the digitization is via projects and programs and portfolios of work, but B, that this is going to be a very long term uh, process rather than a short term process. But then on the other side, we know that the way that we manage projects and program portfolio due to this digitization will change. Um, from uh, you know managing the timelines to managing the resources to managing the cost all the way to actual physical uh, uh, kind of a statusing of if it's an asset related or it's a kind of on-site inspection uh, you know av availability of apps and so on will make it uh, even um, uh, more integrated kind of competency in organization so we know this is changing and it will uh, um, uh, continue to change as a discipline in the next coming years. Uh, so when we talk about project portfolio management and specifically uh, in the federal government, uh, we talk really about three things. We talk about process, people and technology, and this is not kind of, um, you know, groundbreaking information as we all know here. Uh, there are three components to project portfolio management. There is the process, uh, there's the people, and there's that technology. Uh, so starting from the top of the process, and I believe our guest today, or the two speakers will have uh, you know, a wealth of information experience in terms of process and people and share the challenges around those um, and what are the ways to address them. Um, but basically, when we talk about process and project portfolio management, uh, we talk about, you know, frameworks, project management frameworks, portfolio management frameworks and methodologies, uh, but also the, um, you know, the branched 
top other types of processes, including procurement, contract management, uh, resource management, and the alike. So it's not just a discrete framework of project portfolio and program management, but it has a dependencies on other competencies within the organization, all the way from resource management, to risk management, to procurement and contract management, and so on. Um, so uh, the 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 uh, the idea here is that those uh, processes need to be, first of all, fit for purpose. Uh, you can't just adopt a print store or a pin book if we're talking about a project management methodology and assume that it's going to work uh, to any organization. Specifically, again, we're talking here about the federal government. Um, but so fit for purpose, but also it, it is best practice to make sure that the process and the, uh, I guess, the practices are uh, efficient, effective, and delivers the outcomes required from these projects and programs. Um, the second, obviously, pillar is people, you know, project managers, program management, business analysts, people who actually conduct the work to oversee those projects and programs and portfolios. Um, and again, um, uh, the federal government is uh, is one of those, uh, I guess, uh, sectors that are uh, like any others. Uh, probably have a, a lack of experienced and very knowledgeable project program managers in certain areas. Obviously, there are areas that are very uh, experienced and mature project managers, but the maturity of those project managers, program managers, business analysts is one of the challenges uh, that we, we we think we see uh, in the in the federal government sector. And the last one is technology, and this is where I guess uh, I spend most of my life or most of my professional life uh, looking at the technologies that support, uh, you know, from uh, a portfolio to a program to a project management disciplines across different industries. And increasingly, this is becoming a more problematic area, um, again, across the board, but, it, but, but, but specifically and especially in the federal government sector. And I'll talk about that uh, now. So uh, our guests will probably focus and, and, and share with you their experience in terms of process and people. I probably, my bit at the beginning uh, is going to be more around technology and, and how technology, what are the technology that we're seeing, technology uh, challenges that, sorry, that we're seeing in the federal government and what are the proposed solutions and what we've seen work uh, in the past. Uh, our guests will also talk about technology, but probably focus more on process and people. So, um, Look, this is a, a, a just an example of processes. I didn't want to uh, kind of uh, dwell into the details, but you might have a, a waterfall framework like this. You, you might have a multi-tiered framework with, uh, you know, things that start from concept briefs, then go to business cases, and you might prioritize the set of initiatives that you have in order to select the ones that are more aligned to your organization and, you know, uh, available within the, uh, you know, funds of, or be it, um, annual or quarterly or whatever. You might develop a project management plan, a project status report, a project closure report, and you might or might not, you know, realize the or, or measure the realization of the benefits uh, after you've delivered those projects. Uh, you might have another framework. So again, within, we are within the process itself. Um, uh, that is more hybrid or agile, specifically when it comes to digitization or uh, uh, kind of IT type projects. Um, uh, uh, the 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 full agile we haven't seen work in the government, but a, a, a more hybrid approach is the more successful one, where you still start with a business case that gets approved or a project plan, but then the execution, the delivery of the project, might go through sprints if you use Scrum, uh, might go through iterations, whatever you, whatever your agile methodology is, uh, but then you go back to a waterfall test and deploy. So. Again, not only just uh, these processes need to be uh, fit for purpose, but they need to be streamlined, effective and efficient. Now, in terms of technology, you can automate this. You can have workflows to, to automate this um, process, whether it's the waterfall or the hybrid one. Uh, however, the challenge that we've seen, so um, the, the actual tools to automate the process are available for us, can be adopted, can be used, can be configured to uh, either come up with uh, out of the box methodologies like these or can be further customized configured to a certain situation um, and, 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 and make it more fit for purpose. But the challenge as we see it is as you see in this screen is the data. Um, the, the, any organization today, uh, federal government or otherwise, will have a, uh, a challenge that is similar to this, if not exactly like this. Basically, we call them the neural system of data. Um, the data is stored 
in different uh, data nodes, i.e. devices, i.e. Um, locations and uh, formats. So you might have Excel files flying around the organization to manage risks and to manage uh, issues or list of contractors or list of concepts or initiatives. Uh, list of maintenance jobs can be Excel. This is for organization who own assets. Uh, asset details can sit in, in another Excel. You might see project files floating around, some of them to manage actual projects, some of them to work business as usual activities. Um, obviously, they'll have financial data sitting in uh, an SAP, an Oracle, a Tech One, Technology One, um, and so on. Um, you might have IT type of work, whether it's a you know a, 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 a kind of a project execution delivery or just a service desk and a, and a you know a set of business as usual activities managed by enterprise applications such as Jira and ServiceNow and so on. So the story can grow uh, bigger and bigger and bigger and this is not going to change. This is not due to the failure of those organizations uh, in being organized. That's not the case. It's just because that the technology we you know we started this I guess, uh, a demonstration or presentation today talking about digital transformation. And because of digital transformation, everything being digitized, you will see the data sitting on all those sorts of type of nodes. And it's uh, uh, unrealistic to expect that the organization will have a more kind of a structured, a very uh, 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 interconnected one data warehouse situation. That is not going to happen. We don't believe so. Not us as an organization, but all the prediction from all the big consulting firms and uh, body of knowledge. In fact, they predict that these neural system will even become more complex as in organizations uh, in time. So that's the challenge. And, and when, when we play it back into the project portfolio management discipline or, or competency in organizations, uh, you would then go, OK, well, how do I have a just a one place where I can see what's happening in my organization, how many projects we are currently running, uh, how many projects that are on uh, with uh, are being uh, being delivered uh, on time, how many of them will exceed their budget once we're going to finish them. What are the key risks to us as an organization and to our uh, other stakeholders and other dependent resources? Uh, or in fact, what is the change that we're going to consume by when those projects are going to be delivered? What department will be hit? with or division or business unit or you know what group of users will be hit with the most change in a, in a short period of time. Um, how do we manage that change? All this all this insider information is actually we believe is available for us uh, in the organization. The data is being generated in different formats and shapes, but the visibility, the insight into it is not available due to the complex nature of uh, the, the data in this neural system. So that's what we see from the technology perspective is the biggest challenge that's facing project portfolio management in the Australian federal government. Um, so the traditional solution goes, all right, well, let's introduce what's so-called a project portfolio management tool. And there's numerous versions of those. Um, uh, some of you might be aware of uh, Project Online from Microsoft. There's Clarison, there is uh, Clarity, there is uh, Plan of View for the Agile Scrum, uh, not Scrum, sorry, SAFE type of organizations. And, the, and there's even a HP version, there is an SAP version of it. ServiceNow actually offers a project portfolio management capability. Geo is trying to get into that um, kind of uh, train as well. So there's a, a numerous uh, number of project portfolio management solutions out there that organization can pick from. Um, and they, to be honest, you know, they've been doing this for over 12 years now. They're very similar in terms of the things they will uh, promise you and they deliver to you. Obviously, third, certain project portfolio management applications or solution will be stronger in, uh, in certain areas than the others. But in general, it's the same thing. It's project governance, it's ability to update timelines and milestones and uh, risks and issues and project financials and you know ability to automate the approval of certain uh, gates within the project management methodology if you are waterfall. Uh, and the same thing applies, to be honest, into Agile and, and Sprint and, and Scrum and, uh, and Safe and so on. But all of those visions or all of those solutions come with this strategy. OK, well, we're going to introduce a centralized project portfolio management application and we're going to replace the end users individual data nodes, the one that are scattered in all over the place when it comes to project management. So we're going to dictate on those project managers, BAs and program managers to say, stop using your Excel, stop using your Word, 
even stop using your Microsoft project on your desktop, stop using Smartsheets, stop using Jira, stop using whatever they are using. Come and use my PPM tool. And obviously the purpose is noble, the purpose is genuine, that we want just insight on the information because otherwise the organization can't have control of what's happening via this, you know, old type of projects. But the result usually is something like this. You know, the project managers, as a kind of an example group here, you can think BAs, you can have architect or other, you know, project team members, will fall back into using their own tools because that um, PPM tool, again, be it project online, Clarison, CA Clarity, whatever, um, is not fit for purpose for them. Uh, A, because of the maturity that we did, talked about. If you remember people, process and technology, the process usually in those in those um, uh, applications are very strict. You have to go through a certain gates in order to progress your project. The way the, 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 the skills required in order to use those tools are very uh, high, it would be required very high skilled uh, uh, resources, project manager in this case, to use them. So therefore they fall back and say, you know what, I'm not going to use this. Uh, yeah, you know, I will tell you I'll use it, but I'm actually not using it. I'm going to go back you know, using my own individual Excel and Word and project to actually manage the project because this is what you hired me for or as a business analyst to build the business case or whatever the case might be. And they see those tools as just a reporting place and that's great an overhead for them because they're managing the work here. The data is actually being generated here and then needs to be copied again to those PPM tools in order to give executives and the rest of the organization the reporting they want. So what happens is because it's been seen as an overhead, it's not being used, that flow of data from these nodes stop because we're basically putting that overhead on the end users to say copy your data from your individual files that you like and love uh, to manage your projects and put them in our PPM tools. So that becomes an overhead, it becomes usually there's a friction between PMOs and project managers or other you know, stakeholders within the organization and that visibility that we set to achieve via implementing a PPM solution uh, which, that we need to deliver to the exec stop that, that that visibility inside uh, will not be delivered. So that's what we see. This picture is really represent from our perspective the problem that most of the federal government agencies, departments, and other bodies would uh, uh, suffer from if we if they go through the traditional uh, solution of implementing a project portfolio management uh, uh, application. Now, what, so what's the solution? Um, so the solution is not don't implement a PPM solution. Don't, in fact, we, we think that these are, you know, growing. And not, again, so this is showing that it's growing in terms of adoption and usage and, uh, you know, you know uh, uh, functionality, sophistication. Um, and again, you can introduce whatever type of PPM you, you want. Obviously, coming from a Microsoft, I think that Microsoft one is uh, the better one to choose. But again, regardless of the PPM solution you, you introduce to your organization, you, you have to still do that. Um, you might replace, you don't dictate the replacement. You might replace, if someone using an Excel that a project manager, a BA, uh, that doesn't really like using it or is not uh, uh, sufficient for their usage and needs, and you sell them on, look, I have an app here in, in Project Online or Corizon. Let's take, for example, uh, the very simple example of yeah, risks or issues management. Um, so they say, let's say they maintain it in Excel, you know, they copy and paste into the status reports and it's an overhead for them and say, look, if you do it here, you wouldn't need to do this uh, copy and pasting anymore. Would you like to use it? So replace if appropriate, if sold, if adopted, if accepted by the end users. But the most important one, and that's why it's kind of on the right here and it's quite um, big is the ongoing integration, not only to the enterprise applications like Oracle and Jira um, and SAP and ServiceNow and you know, the other you know, big enterprise applications, but also to the individual files managed by those uh, uh, users, end users. Excel sheet, Microsoft Project Files, you, know, you name it, whatever the data source is, you would integrate with it. And the integration I'm talking about here is not an application to application, API to API integration, all of that technical work required. The integration is data map. And Microsoft has produced something that I'm gonna show you today to make this an end, a business, a user uh, exercise rather than you have to engage technical people to write those integration for you. And you have, we think that the, the thinking should, should switch from integration as a one-off exercise, as a one-off project you implement at the beginning, 
to an ongoing service that the organization has to maintain, has to provide for those users who are using all sorts of the different data formats. So it's an integration service, not an integration project, not an integration one off. So for example, uh, someone is using today Excel, then they go, okay, look, I've, I've, I've this project, I'm using Excel for it, but in fact, I'm gonna use Jira to manage my uh, issues uh, for another project. That is then, for that project, we will integrate with Jira, we'll bring the issues there. So by doing so, then you can create this one source of truth, the exec, we'll start looking at the insights, because what you're doing is supporting the bottom-up data flow by letting the project managers, the BA, the program managers, whatever the name, whatever the type of the role in the project portfolio management competency, work the way they want. We don't go and say, you have to use my PPM tool in order to give, for me to give the insight to the execs. No, you use the tool of choice, be it Excel. Now we will try to sell you because technology is advancing. Excel is not really the ideal solution to manage, for example, tasks. Yes, if Microsoft project is too big for you, you can use Planner. You can use, I don't know, Asana. You can use from a non-Microsoft technology uh, portfolio. But there are a number of technologies that will help you to manage timelines, not only on for your own individual tasks, but to share it with the teams that are very effective. Uh, the team will like to be interact track with them. The update of the tasks and the timelines will be so easy. You don't have to be expert in using Microsoft Project. And I know lots of people hate Microsoft Project as a desktop application, so don't use that. Use, there's a new version, by the way, of Microsoft Project called Project for the Web. There's a planner from Microsoft. There's a whole heap of other technologies from Microsoft that will enable you to manage timelines better than Excel. But also there's a whole heap of non-Microsoft technologies, Asana's being uh, one of them, uh, Monday.com and so on. There's other applications that use uh, uh, can be used for time management and work management and tasks management and their like. Well, if that's what you want, go for it, use it. Uh, but at the same time, you need to give the organization the visibility and control they need. So have this kind of democracy in terms of the tools used to manage different artifacts or different aspects of the project program or portfolio. But integration is the heart of the strategy in order to give the organization the visibility and control they need. So that's what we think what the solution in terms of, in terms of technology. And I'll show you quickly how is that done. Um, look, this is the Microsoft stack of, of obviously this is a kind of a bit of a marketing pitch here from the Microsoft 365 Cloud. Uh, look, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. It's basically uh, within the Microsoft 365 Cloud, which is obviously endorsed, adopted and IRAP certified by the Australian government. Um, we'll have all of this. We're quite convinced that it will have all of those applications, whether you're doing work management, issues management, task management, there's an, a, a number of options available for different users maturity to be uh, uh, picked uh, from. And then what you get is the next slide is that you have then a centralized location. This centralized location technically is called the common data service. And you maintain those integration on both sides, on Microsoft technologies and non-Microsoft technologies. You, you, it's called the Power Platform. I'll show you uh, uh, quickly what that means. I don't want to take much more time. I promise 25 minutes, I'm already running late. Um, but it integrates with planner project teams being very popular in terms of integration. If you want to manage your timelines and even interacting with the external users and contractors via teams, you can do that. Um, but Excel, if, if you still want to use Excel, Excel is a candidate for integration. You bring it into one place and that will give your organization all the insight it, uh, it requires all the control it requires and then you can then automate governance and then you can add more applications for portfolio analysis for contract management and, and the alike now having said that it doesn't mean that by giving all these options you can't use actually the ppm solution for managing risks and issues and timelines and so on so if you have people in the kind of a in, a in the maturity level that are that that just want to go to a ppm solution and manage their projects there or their programs and so on then go for it uh, that is so definitely something that you'd encourage uh, through what we call the replace strategy. But it is catering for the users who do not want to use your PPM tool, which we feel have failed in the in the or made the implementation, made the um, the end goal of getting visibility control fail in the past. So this is look a, a random kind of a, a, a usage example. 
uh, you, in Microsoft you can technology, but also I've kind of put a non-Microsoft as well, Jira and SAP, you have different groups, someone managing tasks using Power Apps, someone using Excel, someone using Microsoft Project on the web, someone using Planner, it does not matter. It goes all into one centralized location called the CDS, and I'll show you this in a minute, and that is reported via Power BI or other reporting mechanism if you want. It doesn't have to be Power BI, but Microsoft native reporting application is Power BI, and then it goes to the organization that give them visible team controls. Issues, same thing, Power Apps, Excel, Jira, financials coming from SAP and go into that one centralized location and then the visibility and control are accurate. People trust those reports. They actually go to them to see the inside of the information. There is no overhead on the end users and there's no gap between operating tools and reporting tools. Right, so um, before I actually get into the how the integration happens, I'll show you quickly few kind of reports, you know, the end result is. So this is a, just a sample portfolio dashboard. As you can see here, there's a list of projects, who's the project managers, some KPIs, start and finish, and so on. All of this stuff is, you've seen it in a number of PPM applications. What division is, is kind of requesting most of the work, how many initi initiatives are in the design, how many to deliver, how many in the closing, you know, in the start and stop, how, what's the cost variance, what's the budget, how many initiatives are we running, how many risks, how many issues, kind of the start and stuff. But the the, the most important thing about this picture and many other dashboards and reports um, is that the data is not coming from one single place. So first of all, no one is actually entering the data and it's coming from different data sources that we integrate to. Just quickly show you, you know, other maybe resource availability, for example, you know, who's available, what kind of role, you know, we can see right here in August, we will have minus two business analysts. We will be short of two business analysts minus six in January 2020 and so on because of the workload that we see here. Uh, I can see by division the demand and, and so on. So look, I'm not going to go through details, but again, this is not entered by anyone. This is not maintained Excel sheet and the data here is not coming from a single application. Number of applications are uh, integrated together to give us this accurate picture. And look, and the list goes on and on, you know, financials, you know, what's the labor cost, what's the expenses cost, by project, by capex or opex, by, you know, all the financial analysis, uh, uh, I guess the portfolio, a certain project, uh, if you would like to analyze the material costs, the contracting costs and so on, all of that will be available again from different data sources. So how is this data integration manifest itself in a Microsoft sense? perspective and I obviously coming from a Microsoft background I do believe it's one of the best if not the best integration platform it's called the power platform and it utilizes something called the CDS and this is where the CDS is so let me just quickly give you a very simple example of what we call the entities and this is where the data will be stored and as you can see as a business user you can maintain this we're not talking about engaging technical people once you have this you can do the integration yourself as a business user uh, so I'm going to search for the entity called project because, you know, uh, it is the most obvious uh, thing that we report on. So there you go. That's a project. Um, and I'll just show you the data. I mean, the, each project will have a set of fields, set of columns that we created for it. What's the budget? What's the budget phase? What's the budget category? What's the budget status? And so on. And the list go on and on. So I don't want to go through all of the fields that are related to the entity project. But if I go to the data, you'll see these are the lists of the projects. Here's the project managers. This is the portfolio, the overall status, and I can see there's gap, gaps in the data. So we do this on purpose because this is what a PPM tool usually looks like because this project manager did not update their portfolio name or they, I don't know, and then the PMR or the uh, kind of an equivalent entity would have them to update this themselves manually. So instead of doing this and say, okay, well, this list of projects, I don't want it to be entered by the user directly here or via PPM interface, I'm gonna integrate. So, and this is how you go create connections. So this is the integration, literally this is the connections. And if I go new connection, you'll see that Microsoft Power Platform, utilizing the CDS, have a wealth of connections, as you can see, out of the box, that will, I'll, you know, whatever application you're using, I'll be shocked if it's not on the list. And Microsoft keep on adding to it, by the way. So all the way from, if you start from the top, SharePoint, Outlook, Planner, um, uh, OneDrive, Dynamics, Salesforce, non Microsoft, SQL, OneDrive, and the list go on and on and on. Dropbox, uh, obviously Jira will be there, ServiceNow will be there, Adobe will be there, you name it. Most of the application, Amazon, Redshift, um, you know, uh, all of the applications that you can think of will be here, SAP, Oracle, uh, and so on. 
So, um, but, you know, we can also go, well, what about Excel? Well, Excel is there as well. And project obviously is there as well. So even Excel and project will be there. So you go, I'm going to create project uh, connection to Excel. I'm going to connect, create connection to project. Obviously, these are Microsoft uh, products, so the integration with them will be easy. So you go project and I'll give this how I connect to project. And once you've done that and teams and so on. So once you've done that, once you create creation, you can then have data flows and the data flows could be scheduled or real time and the data will be coming from those applications. And again, once the, like, let me show you, for example, how do I connect to Jira, for example? Let me just go and actually pick that and show you the process. You just literally click, you put your instance, you put a username that have access to the data. Jira have something called an API token. Obviously, in this case, you need to involve a technical person to say, what's the API token for Jira? They just give you the token and that's it, it's created. And that's it, you have access to the data using that username. This is the integration, it's a one screen. Obviously, you need to do the mapping in the data flow. So once you start the data flow, you start doing the mapping. So you go, what fields go into what field against my project? So in Jira, the project name equals what in my CDS or my common data service. But once you've done the mapping and you do it once, that's it, the data will be flowing into the CDS, the data will be updated in that one location, whether it's related to projects, risks, issues, programs, benefits, you name it, resources, governance, whatever you want. Um, and having all of those different management applications integrated into the one place, I can still then uh, continually making sure that this data that represented here is accurate and it's, it's real time and it's trusted. Um, and um, I'll leave it to that, I guess, from my perspective, that's the technology challenge. In summary, I guess, in conclusion of my session, the um, challenge that we see, the, the data being scattered, the uh, solution we see is integration as a service, Microsoft CDS or the common data service in the Power Platform being one of these um, uh, very good candidates for that, um, I guess, purpose. So uh, with that, um, I will um, basically ask uh, Mr. Uh, Daniel Bruns to uh, share his screen so I can, um, uh, so he can start uh, talking about his experience in the federal government around the same topic of uh, project portfolio management. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Leif. Thanks, Leif. Uh, all right, so hopefully, right, so hopefully that should be. Uh, firstly, uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the um, EPM partners, and partners and the generous invitation uh, to present to you all today. Um, unlike my lectures, I will try to keep to time, and that's not a dig at life. Uh, in today's presentation, I'd like to provide a brief introduction and background to myself, uh, discuss the challenges that I've experienced um, that not only face project management as an industry, but also uh, within the federal government. Um, just briefly, I would describe myself as a professional contractor and as a professional contractor, my job assignments usually involve developing solutions for or providing short term experience and expertise to PMIs. The opportunity here is that I've been exposed to the activities of many departments across all three layers of government, uh, federal, state and local. Um, I recently completed my Masters of Applied Project Management from the University of Adelaide. And having worked in five PMOs to date and either established or expanded three of them, I chose to complete my final research topic about the challenges and effectiveness of PMO models. Currently, I am contracted to Comcare, as well as lecturing at the University of South Australia in their Project Management Master's program. I teach what is probably the driest subject ever and value in defence projects. I'm also certified in PMBOK um, and Agile methods. So some of the challenges that I've experienced as a professional contractor. The project management as an industry, as well as a component of the federal government, faces many challenges in our modern society. I've chosen to focus on the following. Project management is a career, not only just a skill set. Project management is generally seen as a new expert occupation and is gaining increased prominence as one of several recently emerging corporate professions but still misunderstood in many aspects. Project failure rates 
remain high, uh, despite the fact that advantages of project management methods and techniques are well documented. In 1996, the Standish Group published that 16% of application development projects met the criteria for success. Four years later, that had improved to 28% of success, but 23% failed completely and 49% were deemed as challenged. Project management offices have increased in popularity recently, gaining responsibility and influence, but the average life expectancy of a PMO is between two and four years. There is also a considerable body of research to suggest that the executive leadership misunderstands what a PMO can do apart from providing pretty dashboards. Similar to Leith's presentation in broad terms, the project management environment in any organisation, including that of federal government, can be broken into three parts, not all of them equal. Culture and education, framework and PMI, tools and technologies. The combination of these three components give each organisation, department or group a unique approach to project management and subsequently an individual level of project effectiveness. In the next few slides, we will be examining the challenges facing project management and PMOs within each element, with specific focus on the federal government and some anecdotes. In a previous conversation with a senior leader at a federal level, I recent, who recently said to me that anyone with common sense can do project management. The application of project management needs to be understood as both a primary and secondary skill set and not treated as a bank blanket application of knowledge. In other industries, specialist teams, you would expect personnel to be adequately educated and certified in addition to their experience. For example, finance personnel to have a finance or an accounting qualification. Project management should be treated in the same way. PMOs and project management is a mix of resources with many people and have either completed their five day courses or learnt on the job. But project management, and the expectations of a PMI have expanded and is gaining increased prominence. Yet the upskilling and recruiting of qualified project specialists and PMI resources does sometimes not reflect that. In addition to the standard project management certifications, there are now more levels of education and three letter acronyms, MOP, MOR, MSP, PMP, P3O and PPC, just to name a few. Not all of these specialist roles require an MOP or an MOR, um, but we know we should know that these roles exist and, and ensure that our essential resources obtain and can use these skills. Technology and tools. This isn't a replica, but the basic concepts are covered and occur in many project environments. The architecture behind the project environment is not well thought out. The locations and pathways of data are not well known. There are generally several people contributing to the reporting process, not necessarily reporting on mutually exclusive information. The information isn't timely, lacks quality, and results in poor decision making. But the underlying issue here is that the organisation does not understand what is possible from the correct mix of tools, techniques, and resources suitably skilled in project management. Frameworks and PMOs. I've always described the implementation of a project management framework as best practice versus how we do things. Although the products delivered by each department or organisation are different, organisations from a project perspective are incredibly similar. Every organisation has an IT department, a finance department, senior leadership, external and internal customers. When it comes to the design of an application and project management framework, adherence to best practice isn't overly burdensome, but many departments, groups or organisations assume that they are unique and tailor their project framework so much that best practice is a distant memory or abandoned elements that seem too hard. In a recent conversation with another senior executive at federal level concerning the realisation of benefits, they said, and I quote, I don't know any government department that has obtained a mature approach to benefits realisation. I don't see the point of trying it here. So when implementing a project or portfolio framework, accept that parts of the business may have to adapt and change types of PMOs. In regards to the PMOs, 
There is no generally accepted industry standard or best practice. There is a significant school of thought that PMIs fall into three broad categories, strategic, tactical, and operational. Here is where the misunderstanding of PMIs begins. In a typical scenario, the organization establishes a trial PMI and effectively creates an operational project office in charge of standards, practices, templates, and a few essential tools. Demonstrated by the large blue dot on the left, however, this project office is only looking after one project. But the senior leadership who recently attended a conference and saw a fantastic presentation about what a PMI can do had mistaken a centre of strategic excellence demonstrated by the dot on the right with a basic operational PMO or project office. The basic operational PMO lacking authority, leadership support and highly skilled resources had been overpromised and underdelivered. Two and four or four years later, the PMO is closed. Demonstrated by the shift from stage one to stage two, the project numbers had increased and the success rate had decreased. However, you can see by the graph that if the PMO had been allowed to develop and expand to a strategic level, there is a corresponding and demonstrated improvement in project delivery success rates. So what have we learned from this? Demonstrated support from senior leadership is essential. Project management skills are not respected, as someone who has never run a project can do so because they have common sense. Project frameworks are not suit, trust, trusted and bent to suit the organisation. You hear of it all the time. Prince 2 doesn't work because it didn't work elsewhere. I would ask, is it the framework that failed or was it the framework broken to fit? Technology is seen as an off the shelf silver bullet. Install it, plug and play it and whiz bang all done. Clear, objective, timely information is critical to making the right decision at the right time. But there are some options available to us. The technology that supports and aids project management has significantly changed over the last 15 to 20 years. No longer is it a choice between bespoke environments that immediately ties you to a future legacy issue or an unconfigurable system that simply takes up rack space. I have placed technology as a foundational piece because it is the first piece of low hanging fruit. Upgrading or installing a software environment is seen as a regular part of business every few years. The difference here is that you ensure that you integrate with key systems for information exchange and automate the critical processes that we know project managers either hate doing or don't do at all. Using technology as the foundation, you build the framework and allow them to work together. Instead of tailoring your framework to remove the components that are either too hard or you don't really understand, ask the question, if we integrate technology with the framework, how easy can something be? Earned value is an excellent example. If I demonstrated earned value, most new project run managers would run screaming to the hills. But via an integrated environment, earned value is no longer onerous. Having completed my masters, I'm sure that I could be described as potentially biased but I frequently come across people managing projects as project managers who are still struggling with the basics. For example, some have never completed or participated in a risk workshop. Project management training is no longer the realm of a one day internal course. Allow and encourage your project staff to obtain recognized industry certifications. And for those who wish to follow the tertiary path, the bachelor's and master's levels now exist. The skills enhancement will provide a level of professionalism to improve both your personnel and project approaches. If you follow these four simple steps, sooner or later you'll find that your project environment is using a recognised tool platform, all new projects follow the same framework, and all project personnel singing from the same certified song sheet. But implementing the cultural shift begins from day one. One simple method required to change the way you support and report on projects. Firstly, the monthly meetings of your portfolio or program board should not be seen as inquisitions. People panic because their projects are red or amber. 
Personally, I'm deeply suspicious of all projects that are being green. I recently heard a compelling description that dashboards should be rainbows of truth. Secondly, support and learn from projects. Ask the question, what does the project need to succeed? Is it entirely possible that poor project planning has led to its current level of challenges? First step in solving a problem is recognising that there is one. Oops. So in conclusion, it is essential to demonstrate an overt commitment to the change and deal with many of the issues we all face to varying degrees. The best practice approach is to recognise what works and what doesn't and provide your organisation with the best reach, uh, the opportunity to reach the best point for you. Strategic PMOs work best, this we know, and to allow strategic PMO to function is not overly burdensome with flow on effects that are significant. Project management has evolved and continues to improve. Correspondingly, the technologies built to support the frameworks have also improved. Allow the framework and technologies to do the heavy lifting. Give your organization's leadership the opportunity to see what their projects are doing via the technology. Either recruit based upon education and certification or provide the opportunity and direction for your current personnel to upskill. In this potential environment, although not easy, will potentially create a wave of change or a change momentum. And at this point, I'm now going to hand back to Light. Thank you so much, Daniel. That was really, really useful. I really appreciate the uh, thoughts that you put into the deck. It's um, very insightful. So I yeah, appreciate the information and what you shared with us from your experience. Um, I guess uh, our next speaker is Gordon. Gordon works uh, for NDIA and he's been uh, working in the PMO in different kind of roles. He set it up, he run it, he uh, supported the project managers and so on. So it's a, it's a, he comes with a wealth of experience um, and uh, we all, I guess, uh, are familiar with the challenges in, uh, that, that uh, the, the agencies like NDIA uh, might have within that as uh, presented by Daniel. But uh, probably now uh, hand it over to uh, Gordon to talk about his own experience in the project portfolio management competency at uh, competency at NDIA. Gordon, thank you, Leith, and thank you, Daniel. Okay, so reiterating both what um, Leith has indicated about where the technology can address some of the challenges and working on. Well, from the experience that Daniel explained about the real challenges, that is having the leadership at the top, but the leadership understanding what it is they're asking. So as Daniel um, uh, indicated, they go to a nice presentation, see a pretty dashboard, and they want that instantly to happen, not understanding what it takes to deliver it. So in the agency, we've been... Uh, playing with project portfolio management since the inception of the agency back in 2012, and we're still struggling to make it a success. Okay, so we use, at the moment, we've gone from the, from having uh, project 2000, uh, P, project on, oh, what, what was it called then? Project uh, server 2007 and 2011, through to project 2010 and then it was taken away from us and we had to struggle back with Visio project on the desktop, Excel spreadsheets, etc, cetera, etc cetera, for a number of years and then we actually had went through trials of the project out of a box and then when we moved over to DHS that was taken away from us and said no, no, you don't need to do that, we'll look after that and then the whole agency fell over in its migration from transition from a trial to transition, which triggered a three week rapid fast ministerial review into the portfolio office. Why did the program fall over? And what they found was why didn't the executive follow what we had set out on our roadmap? And as it always comes back to uh, when you're standing up a new agency like the NDIA, do we have the culture right? So there's a there's reactive style, fast, wanting to make things work, responding to all the external stakeholders, 
oh, I haven't got time for that. Just make it work for me. Just do it quick and fast. And then all of a sudden, what you have in the agency is lots of rework, lots of duplication, lots of confusion, and failure to deliver. So we uh, tried the um, waterfall method first, then made it very, very simple. We went from uh, following the normal standard and wanting detail back to plan on a page, schedule on a page, business case on a page, the project canvas on a page, and we still couldn't get the executive to talk about their project. Go away, just make it happen for me, but I want to direct you about what needs to be done. With our new executive, they said, uh, the key thing is you can have your nose in, but your hands must be off. Let the team do it, which is a real cultural struggle for the senior executives. So we're now adopting a mixture of um, agile methods, mainly that it's Kanban, pulling the work through with the teams on uh, with uh, Microsoft Planner. But the Scrum method is actually used because DHS or Services Australia run our infrastructure and manage the uh, SAP applications, CRM and ERP applications in their environment and they use um, the Scrum methodology. But our two methods, the, we got a project execution framework and below that is the ICT demand management framework and they're both integrated. But what we found was that even though the PMO, we will call the EPMO, PMO, and now we're called the Delivery Offs. Even though these two organisations understand how it works and have de detailed documentation about how it works, it's again, like you said, if you've got part-time project managers or you've got people who have been supposedly project managers, not fully qualified and interpret how things need to be done, it makes it very difficult to make that discipline and process work in an integrated manner. So what we have is um, program managers, but it's not really our strong suite in the NDIF. In other words, they don't understand managing successful programs, can't do a program design, even though we now got the research team in the agency, the strategic research function, who actually can do that better than our project managers. So, and they're asking for that for evaluation frameworks. We've got 19 contractors at varying levels, so junior PMs. Again, it's a mixture. So of those 19, we've probably had about four really good PMs and the rest are variable. Uh, similarly with our business analyst, I've got about three or four really good senior business analysts and a lot of them tend to be technical business analysts, whereas that technical business analyst really sits up in the uh, ICT land up in Canberra and not really in program land. So we've got the select the wrong people for the wrong types of role. And that's part of our uh, immaturity in our delivery office. We don't have people in the delivery office who are qualified portfolio managers, apart from myself. So that's been a real struggle. Uh, with our infrastructure, okay, our services are provided by Department of Human Service, now called Service Australia, and they recommended that the only project management methodology or project portfolio management tool we could use was Project Unlo Online 2016. So with um, EPM Partners, two years ago, we went ahead to implement that solution with their support, but then DHS wouldn't allow it to configure it to the way we work. So we had to offshore, in other words, host our Project Online solution with EPM Partners. Um, so we've met, we've actually been on the Gov Teams environment and one of the leads on the Gov Team environment for over 18 months, and the agency has now moved off Gov Teams to its own uh, environment, which is which is now a restricted implementation of the Gov Teams environment. So again, we're struggling with the agency not really understanding the technology, uh, but we do want to move to the Power Platform mainly because all all those issues that Lath outlined. We have Clarison, we have um, 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 SAP, SAS, uh, uh, JIRA uh, we, on the non-Microsoft side as well as um, 
And then on the Microsoft side, we have all the desktop Alpha 365 tools, and we have the Teams environment where we use Planner and Power BI. So I just want to share now um, another what our environment looks like. Please ask any questions as I go. So we we use this tool called uh, architecture, process architecture. It's from Aris. This is our integration environment for ourselves. How do we integrate and manage change by design? So it's a um, it's software AG. It's used universally around the world, uh, and we're building up our uh, structure using this tool internally and moving towards small projects and rapid process improvement type projects. As we, that's the culture we're trying to move to at the moment. So that's the means for us to manage change by design. I'll just now go to show you some of our environment. Uh, no, sorry, it's not coming up. Um, uh, so um, this is our normal project management process. As you can see, it's fairly Prince looking and we've built this into the uh, PM, PPM tool and we use this to look at how our, pro, our projects are progressing across the stage gates. Again, OK, it takes us a while to build the project and what we found is that the skill of our project managers in building the project Gordon, to get to... Sorry, Gordon, uh, I don't yeah, think we can yeah. see your screen. It's not showing. Oh, okay. Um, so we might just uh, uh, ah, showing now. Yes, I'm yep. just about out of time. So, um, yep. so the lessons we've learned are again, it's uh, like you said, like um, other people indicated, the complexity to stand up um, simple projects it is both a cultural driven one and the skill of the of the people. So what we're trying to do is allow them to use their their simple task. And try to trying to integrate that through through the power platform. That's enough for me. All right, Gordon. Thank you so much for sharing um, your experience at NDIA. It's been definitely uh, very uh, well, at least for me, it's very insightful to see. Uh, I guess the challenges firsthand in in in, in top of in, in the kind of companies and uh, agencies and entities that are very relevant to our event today. Um, all right, look, I've been advised that there is actually a bigger gap than we thought in the q and I think it's going to be around uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes before we get any questions. We do have one question. This is basically uh, about technology and it's talking about, uh, so I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to answer this one. Uh, there, there's a question about connectors to technology one. Um, so uh, the the answer is not directly. There is a custom connector that uh, we have developed to technology one. Uh, so out of the box, if you just um, you know uh, open Power Platform, there is no Tech One connector. Uh, we have our own custom connector to Tech One uh, that will bring the data from and to Tech One. So. Um, not available as the power platform, but we have a custom connector to Tech One if you're interested. Um, so, due to the lag of uh, that we are experiencing in the Q and A, uh, which is a team things apparently, um, we probably ask you to send questions to uh, the email Lisa. Lee. It's been published on the Q and A panel. 
Um, I will uh, spell it out just in case. It's lysa dot le at epmpartners.com.au. Uh, again, it's lysa dot le at epmpartners.com.au. Uh, please uh, forward and send your emails. Uh, sorry, your questions to this email address. Uh, we thank you all for attending, but uh, I guess uh, we uh, uh, um, especially thank our guests, both Daniel and uh, Gordon uh, for their insights and their participation. We highly appreciate it. Uh, if you have questions to the gentlemen who participated today as a speakers from the federal government, also please uh, for, send that to uh, Lisa uh, dot Lee at epmpartners.com.au. We will share uh, the email addresses of both our speakers with you after the event should, if you want to contact them directly as well. Uh, thanks everyone for attending the uh, virtual forum. Hope that was uh, beneficial. I uh, hope that uh, you uh, uh, got what you wanted to get uh, from this event and uh, we uh, hope that we can uh, talk to you, connect to you and speak to you in the near future. Thank you so much. Thank you, buddy.